People oh, yeah. could finally evaluate the scale of the tragedy for the country. Cities in the South were in ruins, and a depressing truth emerged as 700,000 lives were lost. But there it's is crazy, still one bro. urgent burning question. What to bro, do bro, 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 750,000 people dead, right? It blows my mind how this is still the, the worst american death rate in any any war not even world war ii like i, I think about america is america is always always intervening other countries politics and yet no no other no other war still hasn't compared to this bruh like Wait, wait, wait. When they count the casualty, do do they count the casualties from like the Confederate side? Right? Do they count the casualties from the Confederate side? If I'm not mistaken, right? Is that why the casualty rate is so high? Because if it's like why? If if you don't count the Confederate casualties, I don't know how much the Confederates lost, but I'm assuming that they lost more than the americans well the union but i don't know it's, it's, if someone could explain that to me like how much did the confederates lose because i think when you actually like split them apart if they're not combined as american casualties right then it, it's not as crazy you know what i mean with three hundred thousand rebels and a whole congress of former enemies should you as a winning side strictly punish all of them for numerous war crimes or is there another solution for such a challenging question? When Ulysses Very Grant interesting and Robert Lee topic. met on April 9, 1865, at McLean's residence at Appomattox Courthouse to arrange terms for the surrender of Lee's Army of Northern Virginia, Lee had no idea what to expect. He had warned one of his soldiers just a few hours before that he would take the consequences for my actions. He could be arrested and taken to prison for all he knew. So he, he didn't know. Oh, oh, that's scary. I'm not going to lie to you. That's scary. But, but. <laughs> oh, dude, 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 dude. Imagine being in that position right now. You could literally be hanged legally. Legally speaking, he could be hanged. Oh, man. Nah, bro. Nah. Nah. It, nah. I don't know how I would feel in that position. It, me personally. Also, why is this video low quality? Much better. But if that was me personally, <laughs> nah, bro, I would, I would fight to, to, to every bit. Cause like you, you don't know what your fate is, bro. Like, yeah, I, I don't think anyone would want to take that chance. Let's continue. Relieved when Grant drafted terms that included these provisions, the officers to give their individual paroles not to take up arms against the government of the United States until properly exchanged. This done, each officer and man will be allowed to return to his home, not to be disturbed by United States authority. In other words, this is the end. Go home and behave, and we won't bother you anymore. Very, very... Very, very, like I was saying, very, very, the way how the Civil War ended to me, it's just, I feel like the South got way too much leeway, like way too much leeway, and that's why the, the, the echoes of the Civil War still, still haunts the United States today, because the way, I mean, like, come on, you could have done anything that you wanted with them, and... You know, they, they, they couldn't really, like, stop you, right? But the way how, you know, they were just kind of brushed off, you know? They were... I know what happened to the Confederate president. He was shot. But most of everyone, they were just kind of, just sort of like, eh, well, you did something bad. Nah, 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 nah. And just kind of brushed off. But let's continue. Exception yeah. of the occupying Union forces stationed across the South for nearly a decade during Reconstruction, most common soldiers on both sides laid down their muskets and returned home. 
They were mostly farmers' sons. As they should. Therefore, they returned they to their father's fields and assisted in the production of tobacco, cotton, or cows. Wait, 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 wait. farmers. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. Was this what the slaves were doing? Was this exactly what the slaves were doing? Rebuild the war-damaged or destroyed mills, bridges, tanneries, buildings, roads, and railroads. Along the railroads, new cities grew up, offering farmers' sons Bro, new chances this is... in town. Some ex-soldiers relocated to West. This is what I'm. This is what I mean, bro. Because when when the uni occupied the south, the south was actually like going in the right direction, and then when when the, when the union just left, everything just completely went downhill. Territory. Let's dive into memories of a former regular Confederate soldier. I owned a small farm, and indeed, my family owned a group of slaves who were the recently accent. freed. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> the accent, bro. The accent, bro. This guy, this guy has like a weird English AI. It sounds like an AI English accent. I know. He just literally switches out to like a deep southern, deep southern American accent. Let's continue. Surprisingly, the freed slaves expressed a wish to stay with us. Opting for a fresh start, we made the decision to move to Texas. I, being married with two young children, went on the journey to Texas with our former family of slaves. They had four children. We worked together to construct two dog trot cabins, working side by side as former slave owners and former slaves, building That's a wild. new life as neighbors. That is actually Let's wild. That is actually wild, bro. Like, y y y the, the former slaves, dude. That is crazy. Actually, I can't even be talking because this is like 30 years after what slavery ended. Um, emancipation happened in the British Empire. The way, the way how the British Empire handled emancipation was um, um, very interesting, uh, to say the least, <laughs> compared to the way how America handled uh, emancipation. <laughs> um, I know um, Britain uh, replaced the slave the black african slave labor um at this point it was just black slave labor with um indian indentured servants right because at first it was you know white white people from you know britain um, mostly white people irish scottish white people who came but then they got replaced by the africans and then the africans got replaced by the indian indentured servants life and they, which is basically slaves um i i no one really talks about that like no one really talks about how like you know they were they were like the indians were treated and there are still many people who are descendants like indian descent in the caribbean from from those indentured servants no one really talks about that it's, Kind of sad, because what they went through is very hard to... I feel like everybody deserves an equal footing, but, you know... Everything isn't made equally, right? You know, everything isn't made equally. So, you're not really going to hear that. But, yeah. The most, the most important people. figures of the Civil War. General-in-Chief and President of the Confederate States, Robert Lee and Jefferson Davis. I know what President happened with Davis. Pardoned Robert Lee when he surrendered at Appomattox Courthouse on April 9th, 1865. Bro, Abraham Lincoln, he was too soft, bro. Like, he was, he was, in my personal opinion, he was too soft. Especially when the war ended, bro. When the war ended, at this point, they lost. They got completely destroyed. I mean, come on. I mean, I made reaction videos to the American Civil War. Unfortunately, my channel was shadow banned back then, so it didn't even get traction. But, like, <laughs> I mean, I made reaction videos to the American Civil War, my dude. But, um, but Lincoln was just too, too bloody soft. Look at, like, what, this, the Confederates had literally suffered total defeat. I like it was just yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna party, you. I'm gonna, you party, yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, Abraham Lincoln, Loki overrated. He's Loki overrated, and he was carried by his generals, right? People say, "Oh, Lincoln won the Civil War." Like, I used to think like that myself. I used to think, "Oh my God, Abraham Lincoln won the Civil War." But the more I think about it, the more I realize that Abraham Lincoln. Uh, you know, overrated 
He was unable to return to his estate in Arlington, Virginia, because it had been turned into a national cemetery overlooking the graves of thousands of Union troops. Whatever happened, he didn't want to leave Virginia. I cannot desert my native state in the hour of her adversity, he remarked to a friend. I must abide her fortune and share her fate. Instead, respect. Lee respect. and his family relocated to Lexington, Virginia, where he became president of Washington College. Now, I can't... Look, I know I'm pausing a lot, because I have a lot to say, but it's wild to me how these people felt more loyalty to their state rather than the country. Because in the United States today, and it's like so different now, you know? It's like states i mean at least to me i don't i don't see people who's like oh i'm loyal to florida i don't really see that i don't really see people say oh i'm loyal to new york or i'm loyal to tex well well i actually kind of see that with, with texans never mind never mind never mind but i don't really see that with like, any other state aside from texas in my personal opinion it's just crazy to me how back then these people just felt more loyal to their state like where like what change was it because of the civil war that that whole state loyalty mindset change or because a state is like sure you know united states of america but a state just feels more like a province at this point <laughs> you know what i mean like <laughs> like, like a state is literally supposed to be a country but america is supposed to be like a, a union of states but the states don't even feel like states they just feel like provinces at this point man i would really love to live back then you know just to feel the vibe the, the energy you know what i mean oh man i would really love to be that you know to see like why these people would choose their state over their country Wow, I, I, I'm guessing it's the opposite feeling, you know, where now it feels like the federal government is like, owns like everything, you know, it just feels like, oh yeah, federal government, federal government, you know, sometimes I even forget that we have governors, you know, in America, like, I'm like oh yeah, America have governors. <laughs> oh my gosh, the only thing I remember about America and the government is that, oh, Congress, Senate, President. A vice president. <laughs> That's it. It is, it is said dead. that he accepted this low-level position, which paid only one thousand five hundred dollars per year, because he felt it was unethical. How much is that in today's money? Such a brutal and bloody conflict. How much is that Washington in today's College money? Expanded physically and financially during the next five years, and Lee's personal connection with many of his students mirrored his goal to build a new generation of Americans. Lee signed an amnesty oath in 1865, hoping to become a citizen of the United States once again. He did so to actively persuade Confederate soldiers to rejoin the Union. Lee's wish to become an American citizen was destroyed by fate. His oath of allegiance was misplaced, and he died of heart failure on October 12, 1870, oh. still considered just a guest in his own home country. Oh no, no! That is mm, that is actually kind of oh, dude, that's so. T I know he was a traitor. To be honest, I don't even I don't even give a blast. Honestly, like <laughs> I'm not even American, so I'm just gonna say no. That is sad. That is actually that's actually tragic. Like he was he was, he was actually trying to do something good. That he was trying to convince confederates to do something good. And, oh, and he died? And he, oh, dude, that's actually so sad. Oh, man. I just, I just hate whenever people, you know, they're trying to redeem themselves. They're trying to, you know, make up for what they did in the past. And then, you know, just something just kills them. I think that's the saddest thing that could ever happen to someone, dude. That's just because, oh, you just leave. Oh, it's all in vain, dude. That's oh no. The more I think about that, the more the more like disheartened I actually feel, dude. Oh man. Well, I mean, I don't know. 
I, I don't know how to feel about this. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know if he's in heaven or what. I, I guess. His oath was uh, uncovered in the National the Archives only 100 years later. 100 Davis, years? The remainder of the Confederate administration. What the heck? Richmond on April 2nd, 1865, as the Union Army moved on the Confederate capital. On May 10th, Union soldiers caught Davis in Irwinville, Georgia, and imprisoned him for two years at Fort Monroe, in Virginia. Davis was indicted, but never tried for treason, and released on bond in May 1867. Davis's emotional and physical health had worsened while incarcerated. After spending two years traveling in Europe and working for a life insurance company, he and his family returned life to Memphis, Tennessee. Tennessee. Life insurance. In 1876, they returned to the Mississippi Gulf Coast, where an admirer called Sarah Dorsey let them stay in a cabin on her seaside farm near Biloxi. Dorsey left her estate, Beauvoir, to Davis and his family when she died. He would spend the rest of his crazy, life there, bro. eventually writing his experience of the war in a two-volume book titled The Rise and Fall of the Confederate Government in 1881. Davis died in New Orleans in December 1889 from severe bronchitis. Wait, 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 wait. I thought that he was shot. I thought he was shot. I thought Jefferson... Was that someone else? Are you a shot? What? He moved and reburied in Hollywood Hot Cemetery in Richmond, the old Confederate capital, in 1893. Not every soldier and officer was lucky enough to start a new life as if nothing had happened. Some actions were unforgivable, and the hands of these individuals were already too deeply Yeah, I want to I want to hear about this. I want to hear about this. In early 1864, Henry Wurz was given command of the Andersonville prison officially known as Camp Sumter. While both sides jailed convicts in terrible oh, conditions, Andersonville deserves oh, special recognition the for the hellish conditions in which its prisoners were held. Oh, this is like a holocaust. Do they look like freaking Auschwitz victims? A stockade housed thousands of soldiers on a desolate, dirty area of land. A tiny stream ran through the camp, providing water for Union soldiers but it quickly became a breeding ground for illnesses and human waste. Oh, Nearly 13,000 oh. of 45,000 prisoners transferred to Andersonville died there. That's literally a concentration war, camp. Oh. Words was arrested in May 1865 and prosecuted by a military trial in August on allegations that he had conspired to injure the health and destroy the lives of soldiers in the military service of the United States. Yeah, you gotta go. Weirds was caught martyred. <laughs> you gotta go. Guilty on all counts. <laughs> you gotta go. Death penalty by hanging. Notorious guerrilla fighters faced the same faith. Samuel Champ Ferguson broke up his gang and went back to his farm at the end of the war. Upon hearing of his return, the Union soldiers captured him and brought him to Nashville, what? where a military court convicted him for 53 murders. Oh, Ferguson claimed oh. he killed over 100 people personally and admitted that his band had slain many of the victims listed. He said that this behavior was just a part of his soldiers' duties. Ferguson and his guerrilla group were known for their part in the Battle of Saltville when they killed oh, wounded Union soldiers and prisoners. The fifth oh, United yeah. States nah, colored nah, cavalry. Nah, at first, at first I was going to be like, okay, well, that's just a part of warfare, right? But, okay, yeah, they're, like, killing injured and wounded troops. Yeah, no, 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 no. Send them to the gallows. <laughs> stormed entirely of black soldiers, together with their white leaders, were the victims. Charges oh. were made against Ferguson and his crew for killing victims with injuries while they were in hospital beds. The prisoners had nearly been massacred, only sparred by the entrance of Thomas's Legion of Cherokee Indians and Highlanders. Ferguson immediately took his soldiers and left after hearing that regular Confederates had arrived. For such crimes, he was court-martialed and hanged. Henry Magruder was found guilty on 17 rubbish. charges of murder, <laughs> wounding with intent to kill and rape. The court also condemned oh, him to death by hanging. 
The third hanged guerrilla is Marcellus Jerome Clark, who killed three soldiers, took four prisoners, and destroyed the burned the railroad depot. Still, not every Confederate was prepared to accept that the war was coming to an end. Well, naturally. Some troops chose to reject their commander's decision at Appomattox Courthouse Court. and in the surrenders that followed, intending to enlist in another Confederate army. Rather than oh, concede defeat, would they, what? some of Kirby Smith's what? soldiers marched into Mexico after his eventual surrender. In the years that followed, many of these soldiers who had refused to accept surrender at the end of the war went on to oppose the federal government and formed paramilitary groups like the Ku Klux Klan ah, during the Reconstruction era. Ah, Many I nations see. made an effort to attract Southerners in the midst of the instability after the Civil War, mostly for political and agricultural motives. For instance, Mexico's Emperor Maximilian granted tax reductions and land. Land and tax benefits were also given by the Venezuelan government. Additionally, an Ottoman viceroy in Egypt recruited former Union and Confederate officers to assist in the invasion of Ethiopia. What? The Confederate ally, Dom Pedro II of Brazil, who had provided southern ships with supplies and shelter during the Civil War, offered the biggest benefits, though. He promised the Confederates speedy citizenship, paid for their transportation to Brazil, offered land to them for as cheap as 22 cents per acre, and occasionally even met them as they disembarked. Slavery was still wild. legal at the time in Brazil, a country that had imported more slaves than the United States throughout oh. the course of its history. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, people talk about slavery in um, America and slavery in the in the British Empire. Bro, 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 Brazil, 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 Brazil was the worst. Nobody talks about slavery in Brazil, dude. Nobody talks about that. Why does nobody talk about that? I don't know. But I know that Brazilian slavery. But Brazil didn't even end slavery until what? Almost the 1900s. Slavery was not prohibited there until 1888. Yeah. Nevertheless, <laughs> these American immigrants were never able to recreate the vast plantations that held slaves in the Deep South. Those who relocated to Brazil were not rich plantation owners. They were middle-class farmers, physicians, teachers, and machinists. They weren't die-hard slaveholders, and many belonged to families that had traditionally been pioneers on the frontier. Up to 3,500 Confederates lived in Municipality Americana and the surrounding areas during its peak of activity in the late 1800s. Though that they is were cool. married and practiced interfaith that is marriage really at first, cool. the generations born in Brazil had a far higher chance of migrating to Brazil's cities or becoming more integrated into society overall. Yeah, assimilation. Before I begin this video, I decided to quit. All right, so that was that was a really good video. Honestly, I had that saved to react to, and you know, I decided, hey, I'm just gonna react to something like a like related to american history because i haven't really really been reacted to american history since my audience is american and you know a, like an actual friend of mine who wanted me to react to, to the american civil war anyways so i you know i kind of did it <laughs> um but you made it all the way here just subscribe you made it all the way here okay if you made it all the way here and you're new come on subscribe that means you like my reaction all right subscribe for more thoughtful reactions okay i give thoughtful reactions i don't sit here and watch my screen god damn it i actually sit here and give thoughtful reaction and give meaningful reaction bro do you know that sometimes i'll see a video that i would want to watch but i would like i'll be like no 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 no. i'm gonna save it for later to react to to record myself reacting to it so i have a blind reaction seriously seriously i do that just so y'all can have a a fresh reaction out of me man so you know just you know just subscribe you know it takes one second like the video it also takes one second one second well, i put zero one second one bloody second man anyways this that was a really good video man that was a banger video man you know anyways thank you for watching and make sure that you stay tuned